Hello students, welcome to the new video that is on the chapter of the transmission system that is used in the two-wheeler vehicle. Until now we have seen about the number of components of the transmission system which is required for the two-wheelers. The first we saw about the clutch, we saw about the different types of clutch which is either used for the manual transmission or automatic transmission. Right? Also in the case of the automatic transmission as we saw that clutch is present but the operating mechanism to operate the clutch is not necessary as it operates automatically right so but clutch is also present which is a centrifugal clutch also we saw about the gearbox that is used in the case of the two wheelers in the case of the manual transmission which is mainly a sequential gearbox which is used for the vehicle now we will see about the gear shifting mechanism right we saw about the gearbox but how that shifting works in case of the two wheelers that we will see right in the case of the four wheelers the gearbox you can see that the lever or the shifting mechanism is given beside the driver which is operated by our hand now in the case of the two wheelers there are two methods which is generally being employed in the case of the two wheeler gearbox shifting mechanism is that first one is the hand operated and second one is the foot operated Right. I don't think uh, anyone will remember the hand operating mechanism but it is generally used in a scooter right the older scooter used the gear shifting mechanism which works by the hand operating right the handle needs to be lowered by applying the clutch it will be lowered and the gear shifting will be done in such a manner right in the figure right now you can see the gear shifting mechanism which works by the hand operated mechanism you can see the clutch lever and the grip is provided simultaneously so that clutch lever will be pushed and with the pushing of the clutch lever the grip will be lowered down right with that the gear will be shifted that mechanism or this mechanism in comparatively simpler mechanism the number of component which is required to shifting gear is very lesser in this mechanism compared to the foot operated gear mechanism right you can see the number of component which is the cable which is connected with our gearbox the selector sector will, will be connected which i told you about the star wheel the selector stem will be connected which will be connected with our constant mesh gearbox with a tunnel type right in this in place of the ball bearing that we saw in the previous video the tunnel gear is connected to engage the gears with our output shaft whenever we are shifting the gears in case of the scooter the constant mesh gearbox was used and that was operated by a simple hand in the case of the foot operated gear shifting mechanism and you can see right now there are number of component which is required to operate the gearbox Right. This is only the shifting mechanism. Here gearbox is not shown. All these components are the components of the gear shifting mechanism. But this is a better operating mechanism for or on the purpose of the uh, driver. Right. It can easily be operated without changing any posture or without changing any movement of the hand or foot. Generally, foot raised on which are foot raised. At that point, the foot lever is provided and that can be easily operated. Right? You can see that the chain the shaft is connected with our foot lever. On that chain shaft, we have provided shifter arms and the forks of the shifter are connected on that shaft. That forks will further be connected with our dock clutches which operate our gear so whenever we push our foot lever the shifter fork will work and with the working of the shifter fork the gear will be shifted so this is simply how the gear shifting mechanism works let's see about the cvt that is continuously variable transmission this cvt is generally being used in case of the activa or jupiter types of vehicle which works on the automatic transmission so let's see how this cvt actually works in place of the gearbox cvt works automatically and it gives us infinite number of gear ratios which can be used in case of the cvt right you can see the cvt 
the belt which is being given is a part of a CVT. In the case of the CVT, two pulleys are arranged with a belt. One is a driver pulley which is connected to the engine side and second one is the driven pulley which is connected towards the output side towards the wheel side. The belt is connected over those pulleys. The diameter of the pulley can be changed in such a way that the pulley is given in a conical shape. The conical shape inside is been given so that diameter when changes the gear ratio changes. This is how simply the CVT principle works. How the diameter of the pulleys changes can be seen and also the mechanism will be given. You can see that variator is connected with the pulleys. The conical shapes is given in the pulley. One end of the pulley is fixed and second end is a moving end in which a variator is provided which works on the speed of the vehicle. Whenever the speed increases, the chain pulley shape will be changed. In the second case, compression spring is given at the changing side and second end is the fixed for the pulley. This is the maximum diameter of the first pulley and this is the minimum diameter of the driving pulley. Right. So in that case, the RPM that we are getting is the lowest and the torque will be highest which will be generally when we start our vehicle. When the speed increases, the diameter of the driving pulley will increase and the diameter of the driven pulley will decrease. In this figure, you can see that the rollers are provided in the variator which changes the shape or it changes the diameter of the pulleys which are connected in the CVT system. That diameter will be changed whenever the speed increases. The rollers will get the centrifugal force and that centrifugal force will change the diameter of the pulley and this is how the speed of the CVT will increase whenever the driving pulley is connected with the engine. The speed increases, the RPM of the engine increases and this is how the diameter of the engine increases. The conical pulleys goes outside which is being connected with variator and the diameter increases and the centrifugal clutch that we already discussed is also used in with the component of the CVT. Also this is works on the centrifugal force whenever the centrifugal force will be applied on this the weights which are connected will go outward right you can see very clear in this that when the speed will increase the weights will go in the outward direction because of the centrifugal force and this is when the clutch will get engaged so the centrifugal clutch is also very important in case of the automatic transmission vehicle and which uh, further transmit the power via CVT right also with the centrifugal clutch weights if you might have seen that the springs are attached that springs are used to get the weight back to its original position when the operation is completed right so CVT and the centrifugal clutch both are the very important components for an automatic transmission vehicle such as Activa and Jupiter in this case you can see that we do not require any clutch or we do not require any gearbox and only by applying the accelerator the vehicle can be driven easily. The same system is also employed in the four wheelers as well but the components that are used in the four wheelers are different compared to the two wheelers because centrifugal clutch will not be used in case of the four wheelers and in case of the four wheelers there are different arrangements with the CVT is given in a modern vehicles. Now the last component that needs to be seen is a final drive. Right? We saw about the primary drive, the primary reduction in which mostly we use the gear drive. Now how the final drive works, how the power is transmitted. So first option for the final drive is the belt drive. If we connect the belt with our rear tire and the front tire then the final drive will work power can be transmitted. The most widely used drive that is a chain drive that we have already seen in a motorcycle. Right? Almost everyone might have seen how the chain drive works. The sprocket 
and chain is used in case of the motorcycle diameter of the bunch of sprocket is more diameter of the second sprocket is lower and this is how the power is being transmitted to the rear wheels by final reduction in case of the final drive in case of the four wheelers as well we use the final drive which is a gear drive and which is generally transmits the power by reduction of the power at last next is a drive which is a shaft drive right if the spacing between two components is very longer then the shaft drive is required such as in the four wheelers we use a propeller shaft right that propeller shaft is used whenever we want to transfer power from the front side to the rear side right that shaft drive will generally be not required in case of the two wheelers last one is known as the cush drive now this cush drive might you might not have heard but it is been attached with the wheel hub of the rear wheel in the wheel hub the four rubbers or type of the cushions will be provided so that when the speed or the when the rpm of the outer uh, or the output is more then the vibrations will be absorbed in case of the this cush drive you can see in this figure the normal hub which is been used with the cush drive arrangement is shown so you can see in the wheel there are cushions has been provided which is been used by the black color on which our sprocket with the proper blockage is will be attached with our cush drive and this is how the vibrations that comes from the engine or from the transmission system will be absorbed in this drive so these are the various types of the final drive which is been used at the last part of the transmission system so this was all in this chapter that was on the transmission of the two wheelers from the next video we will start a new chapter until then thank you so much